Now, when you are out on surveillance, what video should you be getting? Well, that depends on the client's request, but we will assume for discussion's sake that we are working a routine surveillance like personal injury, workers' comp, or a typical civil matter like infidelity or child custody. Depending on the type of investigation that you are working, there may be varying things that your client wants you to capture on video. For instance, on a typical workers' comp or personal injury case, the best rule of thumb is to get as much video as you can of the subject of interest in your investigation. This means if he comes out and grabs the newspaper or checks the mail, get that video. If he drives out of the garage and heads down the street, get that video. Both of these scenarios require a great deal of attention on your part as well quick action. Many times I have read a surveillance report that had a line that reads something like this. I observe the claimant exit the house and quickly bend over and pick up a newspaper on the porch and then he re-entered the house. Due to the brevity of this activity, the investigator was unable to obtain video. This video is sponsored by OREP Insurance and Working PI Magazine. OREP is a leading provider of private investigator liability insurance. Visit OREP.org for a quote today. Now, when I read this, I always cringe and I get a chill up my spine. I know, I know it happens sometimes, but the key to that sentence is sometimes. This should really be very infrequent. I always have my camera plugged into a DC to AC converter so it is always powered up and it's always charged up. I have the screen flipped open and ready to shoot video at a moment's notice. Even with these precautions, there is always the chance that I miss obtaining some video, like when the door opens, but I still get that money shot when the subject is bent over and grabbing that newspaper, standing back up and going back. That may be the only observed activity that you had for the entire day. Now, if you didn't get that video, but you completed the entire eight hour or 10 hour a day, whatever it was, how did your client know that you really saw what you said and that you were right to finish a full day of surveillance? In the insurance world of surveillance, it is very common practice to pull off of surveillance early at three, four, six hour marks if there is no activity from the subject. So how do you prove to the client that you observed your subject? There is also the question of credibility to the remarks in your report if there is no video to corroborate what the report says. If the case goes to court or some other formal hearing, what you really need is three things to support the findings of your investigation. First is to be documented and articulated properly in your report. Second is to be documented in video and or photo evidence. Third is your testimony in court stating what you observed while you were out on surveillance. Lack of any of those three key things is a weak link to your entire investigation. In fact, that third item is so important because without your testimony, most of the time the evidence gets thrown out because the defendant has the right to cross-examine the finders of all evidence. Now, what if somebody comes to visit your subject? Do you need to get all of that video? Well, I always prefer to leave a snippet of it in my video, like the car in the driveway and the driver getting out, then walking towards the house. I also like to get a quick screen grab of the vehicle and the license plate, too, for my report. Usually with something like this, I only include a few seconds of this type of activity in my video. The key with injury surveillance cases is that you want to get as much video of your subject as possible. But what if your client has a back injury and the video shows them using a cane, bent over most of the time, and holding his back a lot? Yes, folks, yes, you need to capture all of that video too. As a private investigator, your job is to obtain evidence as it presents itself, not to be judge or jury in the matter. One of the worst things that you could do is to take video only of the good things like the subject bending over to get the newspaper, but leaving out the video where he walks with a cane or a walker or any other activity that may show that he may be injured. In fact, having both types of activity many times helps your client out in many ways. This shows the claimant displaying both ways, injured and potentially not injured. Some of the best cases that I've had is where my subject walks out of their front door carrying their walker, throws it in their car, gets to a doctor's appointment, and then they start using that walker as if they can't walk without any assistance. When it comes to civil matters, surveillance, and what video to obtain, it is really up to your client. If you're working directly with the end client, then you may need to provide some guidance for them. When you are working with an attorney or a law firm, then they may give you guidance, or you may need to provide them some guidance as well. Let's look at a typical infidelity case. 
case. In these, I generally only gain minor video for minor activity. For instance, a spouse walks out of the house, I grab a few seconds as they walk toward their car and get in, and then I'm done. I can quickly then get ready for the follow. As opposed in an injury case, I would want to get some video of the subject driving if possible, especially if the injuries reduce the subject's ability to sit down or drive or they affect the legs. Back to the infidelity case. The spouse drives to a restaurant next. Now I want to grab all the video that I can in case he meets somebody in the parking lot as well. I want my video to be panned back a little bit so I get video of other people and other vehicles just in case one of them is later identified to be associated with my subject. I also want to get a snippet of video with the restaurant and the restaurant sign if possible to help visually identify where he went. Now on the inside, I want to have my covert camera running when I walk in the front door. If the subject is sitting there waiting for somebody or talking with someone at the front desk, I want to be able to gain as much video as possible to identify who they are with as well. Once seated, if I'm able to sit in a location where I can get video covertly of my subject, I want to get as much as possible, especially if they're with somebody and acting intimate. Now when they leave, again, same stuff, folks. Get as much as possible to show who they left with, what car or cars they get into, then get ready for the follow. If they go to a hotel or some other venue, you definitely want to get video of them there who they are with, and when they enter. Now, if they go into a hotel, I want to get inside as quickly as possible to get video of them at that front check-in desk. When they get keys, who they are with, and where they go as well. Many times, there's only one person at that front desk. So if you go over there, you may overhear what room they get, and that is valuable, valuable information for your investigation. Child custody cases are similar to both injury and infidelity cases. You really want to get as much video as possible of all activity. You don't want to be challenged in court if you cut right before all the times where the subject is being a good parent. This can be troublesome in court. However, many attorneys may ask you to only provide video of the good stuff. Now, there is going to be varying opinions regarding this, but my opinion, from my experience, this is not nearly as big of a deal as if it is a criminal situation. Generally, from my understanding, the only evidence that is typically allowed to be scrutinized in a civil matter is the evidence that is provided. So if I only provide video of the spouse at the liquor store, sitting on the front porch drinking and yelling at the children, then that is all that can really be asked about during cross-examination by the other side. Now, they may and probably will try to ask me about other observations and other video, but that will usually get objected to, and the objection will usually be sustained. The bottom line, folks, how much video should you get? Well, get as much as you can. In an injury-related or criminal-type case, submit it all, good or bad. In certain civil cases, Get it all, but see what the attorney wants you to present as evidence. Many times, folks, the only opportunity you have to get video could be very brief moments. It is far better to have six or seven or eight seconds of the subject grabbing the newspaper off the front porch than to have no video at all.